Let's jump right in with the best way to use the dust bag on your miter saw for dust collection. Instead of how it comes installed, you can actually rotate it 180 degrees so that the bag is pointing up. Then you just come down here, makes it easier to take off, roll up, and throw in the trash can <laughs> because those bags are horrible. Today we'll be looking at 10 tips for better miter saw dust collection and why this is my secret weapon. These tips are going to range from beginner to a little more advanced, but we're going to start where I started in woodworking, my miter saw sitting on top of this exact plastic portable sawhorse. And I had the little bag on the back that I was using. And these bags have huge holes in them, kind of like the Bengals offensive line. And it's not catching any of that fine dust that's going to be getting up in the air let alone pass rushers. So moving over to a shop vacuum is absolutely the first thing that you should do to get some better dust collection at the miter saw. So this is a rigid 12 gallon with a two and a half inch hose, but any size of vacuum is gonna be better than that bag. So whatever you've got, go ahead and hook it up and use it. I'll have links in the description to this and all the other items that I'm talking about. You can pick them up at Home Depot, who is the sponsor of today's video. Now, depending upon the saw and the vacuum you have, you might need adapters, but because these are both rigid, this actually fits in perfectly and I can just go right into collecting dust and easily take this off if I need to go clean up the shop later. After you've switched over to a shop vacuum, now how can we get it more efficient and easier to use? So that's what the next tips are gonna be about. The first one is make sure you're using a filter. Your vacuum may be different, but for mine, they have three different varieties of the dry filters and I've got some right here. This is the general purpose and this guy they say is like greater than 10 microns. So this is really for catching the larger stuff. I can get the finer dust. Uh, this is their second one, which goes to a three layer filter and this will go down to one micron and they call this the fine dust filter. So this is where I would go to at a minimum, but there's one step above that and this is the one I've been using and this is the HEPA filter. So this guy has been living in here for a long time and it'll go down to 0.3 microns and I believe it's a five layer filter. So that's going to catch all those small particles that are up in the air that you can't even see. So I would highly recommend going to either a fine dust or a HEPA filter and that's going to really make sure that your lungs are safe in the long term. Filters are really great at getting the fine dust out of the air, but they are not good at getting the large dust chips. So tip number three is make sure that you are using a dust bag. Because if you're not using a dust bag, all that large debris is going to go right into your filter and it's going to clog it up. And not only will that make it harder for this to filter things out, it will also choke down your motor and it will reduce the life of your shop vacuum. So what I like to do is use some of these high efficiency dust bags. And with this being a 12 gallon, I don't really have to empty it all that often. I want to say once every six months to maybe a year. So it's not like I'm replacing these all the time. These are really easy to change in and out and they come in all different sizes to fit whatever shop vacuum that you're using. So now I can just dispose of this outside in the garbage can and my filters are going to stay nice and clean and have a really long life. But you should also vacuum off your filter. Say every time that you change the bag, just give it a quick vacuum. And since my shop vacuum is stationary under my miter saw now, I just take off the feet and put them on the inside. Now, after a little vacuuming, this guy is about as good as new. And I can just pop it back on here for more use. I like that little quick lock feature. So this is the setup that I used for years, just right on top of this sawhorse. The problem is, is that it's kind of big. It's just kind of all over the place. And also I don't really have any outfeed support. And if I want to move it around the shop, it's kind of just a mess to move around. So. I built this and this is my mobile miter saw stand. I built this back in 2015, the first version and I have built another one since then. Now the saw sits right on top and I added some folding side wings to give me the outfeed support that I was looking for. And I put some fences on there with measurements so I could do repeatable stops with a stop block. But this video is about dust collection and that's why I made this area down here. And I put a couple holes in here so I could take the hose and pass it through the hole as well as the power cord and just push the vacuum in there. And that is tip number four is make it easy. When I now have my shop vacuum right here with my saw and I dedicated it so I got another shop vacuum for general shop purpose, it makes it easy because it's here, everything's all connected and ready to go. Now this setup was exactly what I was looking for for my miter saw and with great dust collection to boot, but I wanted to keep improving the dust collection. And one thing I kept seeing was, these guys, dust separators, cyclone dust separators, two-stage dust separators, whatever you want to call it. There's a few of these on the market. This one is actually uh, the dust topper. So I went out and bought one of these and basically what it does is it turns a five gallon bucket into a cyclone by putting this top on it. But that's the next tip is adding two-stage dust collection to your system. But there's a few lookouts that come with it. Let me show you what happened when I tried to do this. 
So I've got this hooked up to show you how it works, but basically it's a two-stage system. And this hose would be what would typically go into the shop vacuum, except now it goes into the pickup port of the cyclone. So this would get hooked up to the miter saw. So then the air comes into the top and it goes around inside and all the heavy things drop down to the bottom into your five gallon bucket. And then the fine dust comes up the center as it's being pulled in from the shop vacuum into the filter and then the clean air comes out of the top. And then it makes it really nice and easy because you can just take the top off and you can see all of the dust that has been captured inside here. <laughs> That's not gonna fit. So obviously this is just too much to fit under there, but I really wanted to make it work because I love the idea of a cyclone dust separator. So I grabbed my little four gallon rigid shop vacuum, which is the one that I was using for general purpose around the shop and decided to put these two together and it actually fit. And this is what you'll see in the video where I made the mobile miter saw stand. By the way, if I didn't mention, plans are available for this build if you want to build your own. Link down below in the description. Even when I first installed it, I was a little concerned that it might not have enough suction. I'm gonna go with it and see what happens. Maybe I'll switch back to the other one later, but, and that definitely played out because there was a noticeable reduction in the suction. Reduction in the suction. So if you are gonna go with a two-stage separator or a cyclone, then I would definitely recommend using one of the larger shop vacuums, the 12, 14, or 16 gallon, which means you're gonna need a lot more extra space. So it is not a good solution for this miter saw stand, but it could be if you had more room and a fixed place to put it. So the tip coming out of that whole journey that I learned was CFM matters. And CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. And that is basically just the measurement of airflow. Basically, how much does your vacuum actually suck? So this little four gallon guy right here obviously has a smaller motor and just smaller size. It has 110 CFM. And that is compared to this guy, the 12 gallon that has 144 CFM. So that big reduction from 144 to 110, this is not the right vacuum for the job. You need something with much larger CFM if you're gonna try to use a dust separator. And the more CFM you can get, the better. And this is where this guy comes into play. This is a new rigid HD 1400, which is their NXT lineup. This is even more powerful than this guy. This one is 165 CFM. So Home Depot did send this over to me to check out and I'm gonna plug this in. So if you're really looking for the highest performance in CFM, this is the one right here that I would go with that would fit into the miter saw dust stand. So this guy has almost 15% more suction than this one does. It also has some other cool features. So this is a two and a half inch hose here and great for around the shop cleanup. I'll have the links to homedepot.com where you can check this out and all the accessories that goes with it. Now here's an extremely unscientific test on what the extra CFM looks like and will do for your dust collection. I got this little streamer that I took from my kids. I'm gonna show you the suction on the HD 1400 hook straight up to the back versus the smaller four gallon with the dust separator hooked up in between it. But from the front, you can see the extra CFM in action as it pulls that streamer in a bit earlier. But from the side is what really caught my eye. You can see how it pulls it in way earlier and it's gonna catch a lot of that fine dust that tries to escape the dust shroud. Now moving on to the next tip, it is using the right hose for your situation. Now you notice I did not say using the biggest hose. This is a two and a half inch hose, which obviously will give you the most airflow because the larger the diameter, the more air that can flow through it. And as you constrict the air, the air will go faster, but not move as much volume. One of the downsides of these larger diameter hoses is that they are not as flexible and movable. So as you move your miter saw and adjust it for different angles, you need that hose to be able to move freely and to not kink up or bind or bind the saw from moving. And that's fine in this situation, but not in others. In 2018, I started building out my modular garage cabinets and expanding them with this as the end goal in mind, which is my miter saw station and having it on the wall. And if you wanted to build your own shop cabinets or miter saw station, I've got plans to all these that you can build on your own link down below in the description. I made these cabinets specifically for garages and garage woodworkers because they are only 20 inches deep. So if there are cars that are pulling into your garage, if that's something you do, would not recommend it, then you have the extra space instead of a standard 24 inch deep cabinet. So this setup is not a great solution for sliding miter saws because they need so much room. But since mine is a fixed 12 inch, it fits here. And the capacity is right around eight and a quarter inches. So I wanted to make sure that I had at least that much in between the fence and the end of my countertop. And then the rest of that I could use in the back. But it doesn't give me a lot of room back there. 
The problem with this two and a half inch hose is that it's not very flexible. So you see the bend radius here is not great. So I'm looking for more flexible hoses and I found this guy. This is a heavy duty hose that comes with the auto detailing kit from Rigid. And this one is one and a quarter inches though. It does come in a 10 foot length, but look at the bendability on that one. But what I realized is that this is not actually the one you want for this. It does come with all these great accessories for your car and auto detailing, and that's actually what I use it for. But what I found that I thought was the same thing, but it wasn't, is this guy. This is the Pro 1 in 7 eighths of an inch hose. So you can look at the diameter here. This is 1 in 7 eighths. This is 1 and a quarter. So this 1 in 7 eighths inch hose is a great alternative to go down from the 2.5, but not have to go all the way down to the 1 and a quarter. Now, even with this flexible hose, you can see there is not a lot of room back here. And there's a lot of space that has to be taken up just because of the fitting. So the next tip is find the right fittings or make your own. One of the most frustrating parts about setting up dust collection is finding the right fitting. And there is no shortage of fittings. I've got uh, right angle ones, I've got couplers, I've got another coupler that doesn't have a lip, small guys, and rubber pieces that are not even made for dust collection. But they work okay. And out of all of these, none of them fit on to the end. And the nice thing about this rigid hose is that it has this flexible boot on the end. So you can kind of form it in there. So it doesn't quite fit in there, but you can make it work and put it in place. And actually this works pretty well. But the problem is even with this flexibility, by the time that I turn up, you know, that's about four extra inches on the back that I have to account for just for the hose to be able to go vertical. So it'd be great to be able to use something like a 90 degree elbow or even a 45 to fit in here, but this doesn't quite fit. And this 90 degrees overextends what I really need because I want it to come vertical, not to come back up towards the saw. So every saw is going to be different. And if you can cobble something together or buy something maybe in the plumbing aisle that works, that's great. But for me, I couldn't. So I made my own. This is a 3D printed part that I designed specifically for the saw. And this is the perfect application of how 3D printing can be used in the workshop. Dust fittings are so notorious for being hard to find, but they're really easy to make. My buddy Bob over at I Like To Make Stuff has a great video on doing exactly this. So all you gotta do is grab some calipers and measure what you're trying to fit. So I measured the inner diameter and then I measured the inside of my smaller flexible hose. Then all I had to do was go into Fusion 360, which is a 3D design software, and I could put those measurements in there and then connect them at the angle I needed. So I figured out what the angle I would need to cut. Let's say what is this carry the two half a decimal sideways cosine divided by the arc tangent oh there we go yeah yeah then i could shoot that file over to my 3d printer and i was able to print this and i have some electrical tape on here because it was just a little too small and so that is just to buffer it out and make it fit in there perfectly and so now it goes right into the back and then I can put the hose right on top. So this is extremely low profile and it is so small that even the back part of this adjustment for the bevel goes back further than the dust collection. So I can put it all the way back as far as I can until it hits this piece. And I know not everybody has 3D printers, but I bet you know somebody that does have one. Whether it's a friend or one of your kid's friends or whatever, there's probably somebody that you can find in your local area that has one that can print it for you. And it only takes a little bit of plastic, so I'm sure they probably do it for free just to show you what 3D printing is all about. Or it could be that perfect reason to tell your spouse why you need to buy one of your own. Good luck. So this lets me put the miter saw up against the wall and optimize the space in between the fence and the front of my bench top here. I also cut down that 10 foot hose into a smaller section that is just the amount that I need. So now I can just feed this through, put that fitting on there and hook it right into the saw. And now when I swing the miter saw to the different stops, the hose goes right with it and doesn't catch at all. And tip number nine is my secret weapon against dust at the miter saw. And I'm going to call it set it and forget it or Ronco there. And the way that you do that is using one of these. This is an automated vacuum switch. So you can have the best dust collection setup in the world, but if you don't turn it on, <laughs> then it doesn't matter. And even though reaching down to turn on the vacuum is not that big of a deal, having to do that is gonna mean that you're not gonna do it all of the time. So that's where this switch comes in that'll turn it on for you. So let me show you exactly how this works, and I'm gonna do it all up here above so you can see all the connections, but obviously I usually have it mounted underneath. So there is a power cord and this goes right into your outlet. 
and this now powers the whole box. And you see this cord, and this cord looks kind of weird. Uh, what this cord is actually coming out of the box and back into the box. So we can plug our vacuum into the vacuum power switch, and then we have this little switch down here that says auto, off, or on. And those are the states for this power. So in the on position, it is basically just a pass-through. There is also an off. And so if I have it on the off position, then the vacuum will not come on at all. But the magic, as you might imagine, comes in the auto position. Now I can hook up my miter saw into the tool power. So with this in the auto, I can go ahead and turn the vacuum on, but the vacuum is not going to come on until I turn on the tool. All right, so let me show you how it works. I taped our little streamers here to the fence so you can see when I hit the trigger and when it comes on and how long it will last after I let go of the trigger. So there you go. Now you know why I call that my secret weapon against fighting dust, because you don't have to think about it at all. You hit the trigger, make the cut, and the little magic box does everything for you. Now tip 10 is going to be the holy grail, and that would be adding a dust hood to your miter station or to your miter stand. Having a dust hood that has a four inch port and is hooked up to a big dust collector would be great. Now that's not what I'm gonna do because my dust collector is on the other side of the shop and I have not hard piped it yet. So I'm still working with the shop vacuum. But that doesn't mean that a hood won't help me. So I went ahead and whipped up a super, super simple hood. It is just half inch plywood on the three sides and a quarter inch back. And I cut a little hole here in the back so that I can still access the electrical outlet. Now I'm gonna put this bad boy in place. So now this can slide right in over my miter saw. See if I can get it to fit in here. So this fits and I can do the full swing from 50 degrees to the left to 50 degrees to the right. And that flexible hose will just go up against the side and it does not get bound up at all, which is great. So this is just passive dust collection. It's more to stop it because over here on the side, I get a lot of dust and chips that kind of come out the larger stuff that gets thrown to the sides. But what I'd really like to do in the future is to enclose this off totally and either have a port coming from above on one of the sides or potentially even below that is hooked up to my main dust collector. And that is really the holy grail. But I don't know what I want. So please comment down below. Let me know if you have a dust hood, what do you like about it or don't like about it? This was just a super quick jobby, but I would like to make a more integrated one in the future and take some of your ideas to help me out. If you want to see videos on how I built the entire miter saw station, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there. I want to give a big thank you to those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.